All right, uh, this will be my video on section 9.3, uh, problem solving with two variables or solving problems with two variables. It's also my first attempt at using the Camtasia recorder, so hopefully that'll improve the frame rate. Uh, so I won't say something and then it'll show up two seconds later. Uh, this uh, section is a good opportunity to review the five-step method of problem solving, uh, which includes um, identifying the unknowns, um, identifying any variables or uh, variable expressions, and that would include making a chart, or if no chart, actually saying let x equal whatever. Um, and it'll help us review charts uh, that we have possibly forgotten in the past. And um, it will also allow us to practice what we've just been learning, which is solving systems of equations. <clears throat> and I think you'll find it preferable to um, the problem solving we did previously. So it'll be the same type of problem solving that we've done, but we're going to be using two variables, and I think um, you'll like the way it works out. Uh, you need to follow along with me on this one on page 421. And um, we're going to start... Uh, looking at example one, and we're going to notice two solutions there. So let's let's take a look at that because there was an old way that we did things, and we're going to show you the new way. Uh, so it says John has 15 coins, all dimes and quarters, worth two dollars and fifty-five cents. How many dimes and how many quarters does John have? <clears throat> well, previously we made a chart for this. And we had uh, the number of coins, the value times the value of coins, the value of the coin, and that would equal the total value, which I can call it TV. Um, and in this problem, we have dimes, and we have quarters. All right, so it's not too hard of a chart but definitely you'll have to remember um, what to label those uh, headings. So in the problem, uh, we don't know how many dimes and quarters there are, uh, so we need to make a variable. The book uses uh, X. I prefer to use something like D for dimes or Q for quarters. I'm just going to put D for dimes because then once we solve our equation, we know what that D stands for rather than having to go back and figure out what, that, what X was talking about. Um, so, with 15 coins in all, we know that quarters has to be 15 minus D. So, for instance, if we had um, nine dimes, we would have six quarters. Or if we had six dimes, we would have nine quarters. We know the value of a dime. I like to use cents instead of dollars to avoid the decimal. Uh, same thing here. Total value is just the multiplication of the two. And we get 25 times 15 minus D. And at, that's, at this point, we would say the total value of dimes plus the total value of quarters is going to equal, and we're going to have to go back to the problem for this one, is going to equal the total amount of money, which is $2.55. Remember to switch that over to cents so that you don't have cents on one side and dollars on the other. <clears throat> okay, so that was the old way. Um, now we're going to go about the new way of doing this, and it's pretty similar to the old way, so it's not, it's not going to be too crazy. <clears throat> the chart is going to be exactly the same. We're going to have number of coins times value of coin equals total value, same headings. We're going to talk about dimes and quarters still. So exact same so far. Uh, now that we can solve two variable equations, as long as we have two of them, um, we can say, well, we're going to have D dimes and we're going to have Q quarters, two different variables. The value of a dime and a quarter remains the same. The total value is still the multiplication of the two, uh, of the number of coins times the value of the coin. Now in this case, um, 
we can come up with multiple equations. Well, two actually. Oh, excuse me. I figure out how much time we have. Okay. <clears throat> so now we have our chart filled out, and this chart has to do with the value of coins. Um, there's some more information that we know. We know that there's a number of coins and that it's 15. I'm just going to put that down here. Um, so, And then we also know the total value of coins, which was um, $2.55 or 255 So <clears throat> what we can do is use that information to make uh, two equations. Now, previously, we had used this 15 here. Um, as as a number to put in the number um, in the number cell for quarters, right? We use 15 minus d. Well, now we can use it as the answer to one of our equations. We can have a number of coins equation. Excuse me. So we have. Um, she's red here. So we have. D plus Q equals 15. That has to do with the number of coins. We know that's true. And then we can make a value of coins equation. So value of coins. Now notice the number of coins obviously is different than the value of coins. Saying you have two quarters doesn't mean you have two cents, right? That's totally different. So the value of the dimes would be 10D just like before, so 10D plus the value of your quarters, 25Q, is going to equal the amount of money you have. Okay, so now you have two equations, just like we've worked with in previous, previous two lessons, equation one and equation two. <clears throat> and now you can solve these um, either of the two ways you know how to solve them, either by graphing or by substitution. I usually lean towards substitution first, and then tomorrow we're going to talk about a third way. Um, so, <clears throat> so if I wanted to substitute here, I could take, I could solve that first one for d. Seems easy enough. So d is going to equal 15 minus q. Uh, maybe that looks familiar. Look at that. So you solve for d, and that was the number of quarters from the original. Um, so now I'm going to substitute that in to uh, the second equation. So we have 10 times that D that we just figured out. All right, now we're going to simplify and solve. So 150 minus 10Q plus 25Q equals 255. Um, combine these like terms, so now we have 150 plus 15q equals 255. Let's move this up so I can stop leaning over here. Uh, so we have 15q equals uh, 105, and q is going to have to equal, what is that, uh, 7 I think? See, 7 times 15. Yep, 105. Now it's nice to have Q there instead of X because I know that Q represents quarters. <clears throat> now, plugging into equation 1 would probably be the easiest uh, because we know that uh, Q plus D equals um, 15 because there were 15 coins. So uh, 7 plus D equals 15, and D is going to have to equal 8. So I think that there are. Uh, eight dimes and seven quarters. So let's see if that makes sense. I would reread the words of the problem. Now I don't go back to my original equation because I may have made a mistake on my equation. So instead of doing that, I'm going to go back to the words of the problem. And I'm going to say, well, 15 coins. Well, eight plus seven is 15, so I feel good about that. Worth $2.55. Well, seven quarters is a dollar. 75 and 8 dimes is 80 cents and so when we add those together sure enough we get two dollars and 55 cents so we got the correct answer all right so 
Uh, we're going to try some more examples in video two, so stay tuned.